Hi, I'm Tim Britton. I'm one of the coaches of the Saskatoon Power U14 Ringette team. Uh, this is the second video I'm taping and I'm doing so in an attempt to explain some of the information that the girls are going to need to know for practices this year as well as for playing the sport of ringette during the season. So in this video I'm going to start with the player positions. Uh, each team is allowed a maximum of six players on the ice at any given time and that number can be less uh, if and when either of the teams get a penalty. So at the start of the game, before any penalties have had an opportunity to be handed out, you're going to have six players on the ice. Uh, if this was our end, we would have our goalie, our two defensemen, uh, we'd have a right defenseman and a left defenseman. And, uh, they are called right and left defensemen in relation to the goalie. So when the goalie is looking out from the net, uh, the defenseman on their right is going to be the right defenseman and the defenseman on their left is going to be the left defenseman. Same thing uh, once we move up to the forwards, we're going to have a right winger, a left winger and a centerman. So the right winger will be on to the right of the goalie and the left would be to the left side of the goalie. The centerman is generally in the center area and uh, during the game the centerman is going to be actually traveling all over the ice. He'll be up in this area, they could be back in this area helping out the defense but uh, in general, that's the six different player positions and, and kind of where they are uh, at the start of the game. So the next thing I want to talk about is just offensive and defensive moves. During the game, uh, actually every shift, we're going to be transitioning from offensive mode to defensive mode, uh, like I say, multiple times per shift and, and throughout the whole game, obviously. So... I'm going to just talk about this at a very high level because you could spend just hours talking about offensive and defensive play and different strategies, but at a very high level, basically, when we have the ring, we're going to be in offensive mode and we're going to be trying to advance the ring down towards the other team's net to try and get a shot on that and potentially score. When the ring changes hands and the other team gets control of the ring, we're going to be going into defensive mode where we're trying to get the ring back from the other team or prevent them from advancing uh, the ring down to our end where they are going to potentially shoot uh, at the net and score as well. So a couple of the things I want to really uh, stress when it comes to offensive and defensive play is basically back checking and forward checking. And again, I'm going to just talk about these two terms in, at a very high level. So. At the very simplest uh, explanation of, of these, if the other team has control of the ring and they're trying to advance the ring towards our end, we're going to be in defensive mode. So for the forwards especially, the, the, the defense will typically be between the ring carry and our net unless they've got caught up or are in trouble. However, often the forwards will uh, you know, get caught behind the ring carrier. So the ring carrier for the other team will be closer to our end and they'll be advancing the ring towards our end. In a situation like that, we want all the forwards who are behind the ring to be back checking, which is basically skating as fast as they can towards our net to try and get back between the ring carrier and our net to help, help defend uh, you know, go into defensive mode to prevent uh, the other team from scoring. So on the way back, you know, you're skating back towards our end. If the, you're the right winger, so you're in correlation to our net, if you're down here, you're skating back up your wing. If the ring carrier is on your side of the ice, you want to try and get up to that ring carrier and check the ring away from them, potentially get close, past the ring carrier, closer to our net where you can you know, get the ring away from them or possibly pinch them off to the boards and prevent them from advancing the ring or passing the ring to one of their players. The other players, the centerman and the other winger, if they're not in a, you know, close proximity to the ring carrier, they're going to be just skating as hard as they can, trying to get back into the proper position in our end where, once again, we're in a better position to defend the net. Now, once the ring changes hands and we get control of the net, or the ring, sorry, we're going to be going into offensive mode and we're going to be trying to advance the ring down towards their net. And again, at the just kind of a really high level, you know, once we get control of the ring, you know, for example, if it's our defenseman back in this corner, 
we get control of the ring, we're going to be trying to break out of our end, advance the ring down to the other end. Once the ring's been passed up to some of the forwards and we're advancing towards the other end, if the other two forwards, so for example, if the right winger had the ring and the centerman and or left winger were behind them, meaning farther from the opposition's net than they, they are, those two forwards should be skating as hard as they can to get ahead of the ring uh, to allow uh, the, the per person on our team that has the ring an opportunity to advance the ring to get into their end. So again, this is super high level, but basically when we're in defensive mode, if you're, if you're a forward and you're you know, behind the ring or farther away from our net, you should be skating as hard as you can back towards our net. And when we're in offensive mode and one of the other forwards on, on your line has the ring and they're ahead of you, you should be skating as fast as you can towards the other team's net to try and get ahead of them so they can advance the ring to you. Uh, some of the other things, you know, basically that can help, it's called reading the play. So you, as you're skating and playing your net, whether you're defense or forward, you should always be skating with your head up and watching the play and how the play develops. And quite often when you're doing that, you'll you'll see that one player is going to pass to another or you'll see that your turn, what the, your teammate is going to do or what options they have. So you should be thinking about, oh, what can I do to get into a position to help my teammate out? Um, so uh, like one of the things that I can't stress enough is just basically getting into the open. So if one of your teammates has the ring, um, it's up to you to try and get into a position where they can get the ring to you. Uh, the, the person who is the ring carrier on our team, as soon as they get the ring, they're typically going to have one or more of the other uh, team players, team's players trying to take the ring away from them. So they're going to have a lot of pressure on them typically. And they might not have an opportunity to look around to see where you know the other wingers or defensemen, whoever on our team, are in order to pass to them. However, you know you can help them out a lot by you know realizing that okay they have the ring now I'm going to skate into a, an open area of the ice where they can get the pass to me. And again, if we are uh, in offensive mode, you're typically going to be trying to skate into an area on the ice that's closer to the other team's net than they are so they can advance the ring. Especially once we get into the neutral zone, if you remember from the first video, the neutral zone is between the two blue lines. Once we have control of the ring there, uh, although it's not necessary, it's nice if the next pass can go over the blue line into the other team's end so that once we're in into the other team's end, then we're in a better position to get into the slot area which I talked about where most of the goals are scored and to hopefully get a shot and score. So I think I'm going to just stop there. Uh, actually, before I stop, there's one other thing I'm going to mention. It's just pass, pass, pass. So basically, unless you're you know, in a position uh, in this area to, to score, like you know, you're in the slot area, you have a good chance to score. If you're somewhere else in that area, uh, you should be you know, skating and trying to pass to possibly one of your teammates who's in a better position. So, Whenever you do have a teammate who's in a better position to get a shot on net or if they're in a better position in the ice to advance the ring, then you should be looking to pass, pass, pass. And when you do so, we'll be more successful. So I'm going to stop right there. And once again, if you have questions, you can ask me at practice or you can send me an email. Thank you.